Mark and start a series that I'm excited to share with you and to remind and reiterate to the church what we are supposed to be doing and what we have been called to do. Amen. The word that I'll be sharing with you is called operating in light and life. How do we operate in, in the light and the life of God or more, or maybe um, more accurately, I should say, according to the scripture of Christ? How do we operate our lives, every component of our life? Not just some component, not just our spiritual life or, or our worship life, but this thing as we call life in all of its dynamic facet, how do we live it? How, how do we carry it out? Is there a way or isn't there a way? The Lord Jesus said, He said He is the way. He said, I am the way. He said, I am the life and I am the truth. That word truth translated as facts. He said, I am the facts or reality. He said, I am the way to live life in the proper reality. He said, I am the way to live life in the proper reality. And we need to look at our life and the way we're interfacing with God, ourselves, people, things, and situations. And go, am I in the reality that God decreed? Amen. Is life and that is beneficial to me, the glory of God and humanity and the planet, this place that He gave us to live. Amen. I want to look to see. Amen. What does the Lord say about this? And what does this look like? Can we become clear with this? Can we, can we, the, the, it, well, on God's side, we're there already. Objectively, we are there, especially the church. But subjectively, can we walk in step with God? Can we walk in time with God? As God set it forth and called it forth to be, can we walk in alignment with that? I want to share before I jump into the word this morning, let's jump straight into the gospel of John chapter 5. The gospel of St. John. Chapter 5, we're going to pick it up from verse 29. The, the Lord Jesus walked in this timing and step with God, and He had set forth for us to do the same. Then we're going to look and see how do we do it. How, how, how. This will be a series, might be a two part or a three part, because um, I need some time to lay some foundation and to try, try to lead you to the Spirit of the Lord as He led me. Amen? Actually, actually, sorry. I want to pick it up from John chapter 5, just verse, verse 30. Amen? We don't need to read 29. 29 is just about the judgment. John chapter 5, verse 30. I'm going to jump straight into this verse, and then we'll get into the word shortly. Amen? The Lord Jesus was the Son of God, the one who said, You are from below, I am from above. Amen? Amen? He said, I came to bring the Father out, to declare, to make him known. So he come from God, being with God, he says, I see the Father is doing things, that's how I live my life. Yet, I want you to look at his posture, his position, as he lived his life of light, amen? Or his life true, amen? True light on the earth. Look how he operate. And if Jesus has to do this, what do you think this means for us? If Jesus has to do this all the time, when he's dealing with God, dealing with himself, dealing with people, dealing with things. What does that mean for us? What can we, what conclusion, what can we draw? What can we glean from this matter? Let's see the Lord Jesus' posture. This is his posture of interplay on the earth, amen, with God. He said, I am able to do, amen, nothing from myself, independent of my own accord, but only as I am taught by God. This is Jesus. He said, I can do nothing on my own accord, independent of my own. Amen? And he went on to say, and as I get his orders, even as I hear, I judge. I decide as I am bidden to decide. He said, I can decide to do something. As God tells me to do something, that's when I want. I do it. Amen? As the voice come to me, amen, so I give a decision. The Bible called this in Romans, he said, you have to be filled with the Spirit of God, then you are what? Led by the Spirit of God. So as the Spirit leads you, and you hear the Spirit speak and direct you, so you make decisions. This is Jesus. This is the Word of God, the expression. This is John chapter 1, amen, 1 through 5. He said, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God. And apart from Him, there was nothing. Everything was created by Him. But He said, as the Father tells me to do, that's how I what? Do I don't consult myself, I don't try to do anything. As I hear it, I say amen. I say amen. Everything is yes and amen. A amen? Look at it. 
I decide as I am bidden to decide. If, if I don't, God will tell me to decide on it. This is why sometimes his mother or somebody will say, you know, what do you think about this or do something? You go, what does this have to do with me? If God will tell me, deal with it. I cannot deal with it. Not because you're a son of God or you're anointed. You are about to go in every jurisdiction and every place and think you have the right to authority all over the place. No, you do not. Paul said, I do not trespass in 2 Corinthians into other people's work domain. Where Pastor Chow is working, you got, not because you are a man of God or you are one of the prince or princes of God, you have the right to work in that domain. That might be the first lady domain. As you're bidden to act on a matter, called to act on a matter, a situation, a circumstance, that's the one you touch. It's the only one you have the anointing, anyhow, meaning the strength, power, and ability to deal with. Outside of that, you might be acting. But you're acting when you are not called or bidden to do, which means without authority or jurisdiction. Your action is amiss and God will not support it. It's trespassing. What you'll be is rebuked. Amen? For trespassing in another's domain. This is the Lord Jesus. He said, even as I hear a judge, I decide, as, amen, as I am bidden to decide. As the voice come to me, so, amen, I give decision. And my judgment is right. Because the perfect God tells him what to do and how to do. Amen. Just righteous. Because, he went on to say, because, because I do not seek or consult my own will. Your will is your decision faculty. In the soul, you have the analytic component, the mind that analyzes and uncomprehend. You have the emotion that validates the experience that you can reference it. You have your personality or how you go through it. You're a nice person, that person. Not, uh, not so nice, whatsoever your personality traits are. Friendly, not friendly. Amen. But your will is how you make the decision. I'm going to do it or I'm not going to do it. Based on whether mind analyze and comprehend or not analyze or comprehend. Christ said, Amen. Because I do not seek to consult my own will. I have no desire to do what is pleasing, Amen, to myself. My own aim. Amen. My own purpose. But only the will and pleasure of the Father who sent me. When God called you or sent you, you have to do it, the will of the one who sent you or called you. If you call yourself, you can do what? Your will. But if someone call you and empower you, you have to use that empowerment according to what? Their will. If someone hire you to do something for the build a house for them and give you a particular description or how they want it, you don't get to do it on your own. You're the employer. Or, sorry, you're the employee. They're the employer. You have to do it according to the employer. You see, the employee don't get to go, you know, you, you employ me, but I'm going to do it the way how I want and when I want. No, 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 no. You have, to, you have to employ yourself then. You see, you consult the one who hire you or call you to do the thing and supply you all the resources to get it done. So this is how the Lord Jesus walked the path. This is how he's going through the process. Amen. He said, as I'm called to make a decision, I make it. That's I know it's right because it's in alignment to the one that calls me. As I hear it, that's how I make the judgment. If I don't hear it, I have none to say. If I'm not called to speak on this matter, situation, or circumstance, if I don't touch it. See, sometimes as children of God or men or women of God, we travel or we go to different places. We think every place we go, we're supposed to speak and act. You are not called or bidden in that moment. And if you're called, then you ought to do it. This is when you say, I have courage. This is when something you're afraid of. I have courage. If I've called you to this moment, I've given you the anointing to do it. But if I haven't called you to that moment, I promise you, you don't have the anointing to do it. You might have your will, but you definitely don't have the anointing, the enabling power and ability, strength to endure what comes with it. See, when you activate something, there's a certain endurance that is necessary, pressure. You need the strength to carry that. You need the power to break through. And you need the ability to maneuver, to navigate the moments, the situation, and the variation, the circumstance. If the Lord Jesus has to do this, I suggest, and I'm pretty certain, we will not get out of this. Amen? We will not be able to get around this. To do this right, we're going to need to understand some things, how to do it right. And the relationship between us and God other people, things, situations, forces, and time, circumstance, etc. We're going to need to become clear. And we need to understand how do we become clear? 
If the Lord Jesus walked this way, and he, he make it very, very abundantly clear, he said, no servant is greater than what? His master. See, so you will never be greater than me. He declared you'll do greater things because of it, but you'll never be greater than me. The point is, if he has to do it, you do not get a pass on this matter. In fact, it is so much more if he has to do it, you're going to need to do it to a much greater extent. We, the Bible says, if we who are evil and in darkness, amen, then if the one in the light has to operate that way, I think it bears significant evidence that we're going to need a lot more. I want to jump to the book of Ephesians, the epistle, Ephesians, chapter 5, verse 10 through 14. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 10 through 14. The book of Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians. Chapter 5, verse 10 through 14. The Apostle Paul, actually I'm going to, sorry, I want to pick it up on verse 9. I was speaking to the church. Oh, sorry, no, we can forget, sorry. Verse 10, Ephesians chapter 5 from verse 10. It's enough. The Apostle Paul is writing to the church of Ephesians. Ephesians. Ephesus. Yes, yeah, Ephesians. And he wants to make certain things clear with them. Something that I think to, to this day, many of us are still struggling, we're not clear. So let's see and follow the discourse as he addressed the church in Ephesians. The Bible read, and try to learn. Say, try to learn. Try so it's meaning you have to try to learn these skills. You're not born with it. There are many reasons why God gives us a mind. There are many things God creates animals, birds, water, trees, etc. But human beings, the Bible said in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 through 29, God selects to make man in our own image. God is a comprehending being. He has lots of ability, but he's an understanding being. This is why lion, elephant, they are much stronger than you. There's only one way you outwit them and able to control them and manage them. You understand more. Understanding allows you to take vantage point. You are able to take stronger position than them. They are more powerful, but you can take position that gives you Amen? A strong position and put them in what? A disadvantage. And because they can't, they don't have a mind like a, like, like a God kind of mind to understand. They can't change what? Position. If they could have, have an understanding mind with as powerful that they are to switch the position to get the vantage point, you will never be able to what? Deal with them. So though you're not as strong, you can understand more to take more superior vantage point. Amen? And this allows you to stand and position yourself. A vantage point is I can take a better position that gives me a superior advantage over you or the circumstance or the condition. But with man being made in this image and have this vantage point, amen, and God put over certainty, God said, I will also hold you accountable. I know what you understand. In, 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 in the book of Proverbs, you got you're not going to get to claim, I didn't see it, I don't understand it. You go, I know you see it, and I know you understand it. So he said, I will hold you accountable. He said, if you see your brothers and sisters, and they're tottering, they're going to the slaughterhouse, you don't get to claim what? Ignorance. He go, no, 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 no. I didn't make you that. You're not a plant. You're not an animal. You will not be able to go, I, I didn't see it, or if I see it, it didn't mean anything to me. I couldn't quantify it. The God class are those that when they see, this is why God could march, parade in front of Adam, the animal, and he can what? Quantify them. The ability to quantify something meaning I understand context, what it is, and what it's supposed to do, where it fit. The God man is made that way, human being. Hence why the Bible said in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, each one of us have to give an account what you've been busy with, what you've been doing on the earth. God said, I know what you see, and I know what you can understand. I know very well, and you will answer accordingly. Amen? So, because of this ability to see things and understand things, Paul tells the church then, and God knows you can do it, and try to learn in your experience what is pleasing to the Lord. 
One of the things, when the Lord Jesus called you, the Holy Spirit, the Bible said, it's going to comfort you, it's going to help you, it's going to stand in and advocate. It's going to try to teach you. It's called paraclesis, the one alongside you. The Bible said, we do not know what to pray, what we should ask. It's going to teach you how to come to the Lord, to know the things that are pleasing to God, and how to do them. If I know something and I can't do it, then I'm stuck in Romans 7, where Paul was, the things I know I should do, you understand? I can understand and I see them. But Paul said, I have no power to what? Do them. If God just makes us aware of what He wants, what is pleasing to Him, or what is good in our life or our family or situation, but we can't do them, I almost think that is more painful. Amen? That is more painful than not to know. It's wretched. It's wretched because I know what I should do, but I can't do it, bring myself to do it. This is Romans 7. Paul said, the things I shouldn't do, I, I can't stop myself from doing it. And the things I should do, I can never bring myself to do. So the Holy Spirit, amen, is to empower you, amen, to know the things you are supposed to do and to have the power to what? Do it. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. So the apostle tells the church in Ephesians, he said, and try to learn in your experiences, amen, yes. what is pleasing to the Lord. Let your life be constant proof of what you learn, amen, of what is most acceptable to Him. So every day, you should be demonstrating with God, people, things, and situations, the things you're learning to the Spirit of God. And when you understand when God called you, what happened? When God called you, yes, He saved you, amen, from certain eternal death and giving eternal life. Why? Why? Is it He just, He has plans, He can save you. He just want to keep you around? Just so you live forever? No, that, that, no, 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 no. He does want that. This was when He may create you. This was His intention. But He needs you to learn. You see? One of, one of the things that sin did to humanity, sin made man like, like, like a beast. You might say he become like a brute, like a being that can't learn. When you look at people, things, and situations, he or she can't put context to it. It, 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 it was so bad. Sin messes us up so bad that we were supposed to look like Adam, look at any person, things, or situation and have context and operate according to the principles of God. Sin messes up so bad. Keep, keep your hand on Ephesians for a minute. Go to the book of um, Isaiah, chapter 5, quickly. I want to show you what happens when sin gets in. Let me mark this chapter here. I'm coming right back. Isaiah 5, I think 20 to 22. Read me two seconds. Isaiah chapter 5, we're getting there two seconds. Book of Isaiah, the Eagle Eye Prophet. 750. Thank you. I'm using the Amplified Bible, you can use which one? 759. Amplified Bible, uh, page 759. I'm going to pick it up and jump right into it. Let's get back into the Word, but I want to show you something. We have the ability to learn. Amen? And then once we learn, we should be able to what? Apply. Mm -hmm. The purpose of learning is not just for knowing. Jesus said, these are my disciples. Not just those that learn. He said, those that learn and what? Practice. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, those that learn and apply, he said, those are my true disciples. He said, those that learn and do not apply, they're not my disciple. The purpose of learning is to what? Apply what you learn. Mm -hmm. The purpose of evaluation is to make sure you learn and you apply. Are you listening to me? Why you, the reason 2 Corinthians chapter 5, we have to appear before, before the judgment seat of, of God is to what? To see what we have learned and did we, what did we do about what we have learned? When you read the Bible or you come to church or you're living your life or you're communing or studying, I hope you're doing it to learn. When you pick up the Bible or you're fellowshipping or you're praying or you're communion, your goal should be to learn. The Bible teaches you in Isaiah 4, 6, he said, my people die because they don't learn. They're ignorant. They have no knowledge. Now, whether you have knowledge or not, because you're made in the God class, you're going to be evaluated. You go, I expose you to learn this about how to be a mother, how to be a child of God, how to be a sister, how to be a bishop, how to be a pastor. Or to be a teacher, or to be a mechanic, whatsoever you are supposed to learn. You go, and I give you anointing to, to learn and to apply it. Apply it. 
You will be evaluated on your ability to learn and your ability to apply it. There is the good part. He provides all the anointing. Mm -hmm. All the ability to do this. You need an ability to learn. And God is the supplier. You need an ability to apply it. Read Romans 7. Mm -hmm. And God supplies it. In fact, Paul said, who will give me this ability? Paul knew he had the learning component. He goes, who will give me the ability to do it? You can thank God to Jesus. He gives you grace upon grace, favor, and blessing. In Isaiah chapter 5, I want to show sin this man up, the fall. Verse 20 to 23 read, Woe to those who call evil what? Good. And good what? Evil. So what sin does, you can't quantify things properly. You see something good and you look at it as what? Evil. And you see something evil and you call it good. God said, I feel sorry. What meaning? Like you're damned. You are sorry. You are to be pitied. You are helpless. It's like my children have parents. A child cannot discern. Is this poison or is this food? Yeah. Is this an electric plug or is it just a wall? It means nothing. They can't quantify. They haven't learned enough yet. This is why the child has need a parent's to, to teach them. To teach them how to learn, to discern, to make a distinction. Amen? Of things, people, situations, forces, good and evil. The Bible says you are to be pity to those who call evil good and good evil. Amen? Look worse. Who put darkness for light. They think that's the atmosphere they should be in. Amen? And light for darkness. Who put bitter for sweet. Everything is turned up to Amen? And sweet for bitter. You see, when you are calling an environment not conducive of learning, like that, an environment that is not conducive of learning is called darkness. I can't learn in that environment. But when you think that is light, you have what? Problem. Yeah. As a Christian, one of the things you better learn, you better learn to make a dis distinction. What is the environment allow me to learn? The subject or the subject, wherever you are, but do I have an environment that when I look at this person, thing, situation, scripture, whatsoever, I start to understand it? And then do I have the anointing that I can apply? There's no point to learn something that you, you, you can't use. Right. Trust me, you have enough to burden you down. Don't burden yourself with things that you will never use. Christ said there's enough in today. You need to learn enough about today you have to deal with that you don't have time for what? Worry about tomorrow. Make sure there are certain environment that allows you to what? Lord, you'll see very soon what happened with this very scripture. People that like to get high and drunk, etc. That is not an environment that you go, oh, Lord, best. I doubt that very much. You're impaired. You go to jail for such thing. You need to know the environment that allows you to what? To be cognizant of that you can learn. What environment? This includes sleeping, by the way. If you don't sleep enough, you'll find you're foggy. You're not in a state conducive to what? To Lord. Hmm. But the Bible said they mix up states and conditions. They call darkness light. Any environment that does not allow me to discern, we're going to look at this very soon, we'll go back to Ephesians. If this thing does not allow me to understand what I'm dealing with, what I'm looking at, who I'm talking to, what I'm talking, if I can't tell what it is, that environment is what? Dark. Any environment about says make things visible, clear, plain, I can clearly see it and understand it. The Bible calls this environment what? Light. Mm -hmm. But the Bible says, there to be pity, they're calling evil good and good evil. They're calling light darkness and darkness light. Bittersweet. Look at verse 21. Woe to those who are wise in their own eyes. They believe I can figure it out. Don't need, you know, don't need any light. Amen? In their own eyes. And prudence and shrewd in their own sight. They want to need environment. I'm smart enough. I can figure out everyone and everything. Do I've never met this person, this culture? Do I've never lived that way before? I've never entered this moment or see the future. I got it. Wow. That person is, on, amen, is omnipresent. They can be everywhere at what? The same time. That person is God. If you can see everyone and everything at the same time, you're different from what Paul and like myself. Paul said, I'm seeing in part. 
Therefore, my knowledge base is what? In part. He said, therefore, I know in part. But God is omnipresent. He can see everywhere at all the same time. He's everywhere all at the same time. Mm -hmm. So the Bible says you are to be pity. Amen. Who think you are wise in your own sight and prudent. Amen. And shrewd in your own sight. Verse 20 said, Woe to those who are mighty heroes at drinking wine. Amen. And men of strength in mixing alcohol and drink. Here this is their goal. They go, I am great at getting drunk. Look how many beer, how much wine I can, look how high I can get. I can drink a whole bottle of vodka, tequila, and I'm great. You are already in darkness. You are already in states that's not conducive of learning. You cannot afford to go in any more states. Sin already got to all of humanity there. The Bible said from Adam to Moses, all fall sweet to sin. Sin already fall upon man. Amen? Sin will already fall upon all of creation. So you are already going to be mixing up things, not, not in a proper condition that allows you to see. You can't become an hero now and drinking and mixing alcohol and be proud of it. There's nothing wrong with a little bit of wine. There's nothing wrong with a little bit of alcohol. But there's something significantly, significant, significantly wrong with something that puts you in a state that you can't what? Lower. I always tell people, there's nothing wrong with drinking. They kind of always go, Bishop, can I drink a little bit of wine or a little bit of alcohol? So of course, if you feel like the Apostle Paul tells Timothy, you should drink a little bit of wine when you have your food. Good for your stomach. Wine have excellent um, tannins and different things, certain kind of wine, good for you. Yes. But it's something very wrong with you drinking wine that impairs you, amen? Clouding your ability to lower. This is really the issue coming. If I'm drinking and get into a place that I can't discern what's happening around me or in me, well, I'm not looking just for a little bit of talents to get my body healthy now. I'm taking away my capacity to lower. I'm entering a dark state. Amen? That is not good for my ability to lower. I like it or not. Every second, every moment that you are alive, there's something to what? Lower. The Bible teaches in that same Ephesians, I think Galatians. I think it was sorry, Galatians. Amen. Jesus came to bring man into what? Enlightened. To enter the light, the way of light, to be in an environment conducive of what? Light. Mm -hmm. The Bible said Jesus came to bring man amen, into light. He wants you to understand when you look, I know you're going to be evaluated. He wants to give you a chance. You have God going to be evaluating you. You deserve to be in an environment conducive of what? How are you going to be evaluated? Came to bring his disciple into life. He said, You can become expert heroes of drinking wine and mixing alcohol. That is not an environment that will allow you to be affected. You got, I find you are to be pitied, you're woe. Amen. He said, As a result, you're so confused, calling darkness light, and you depend on your limitation, and you always in fear. Look at verse 23. He said, As a result, look what happened. Who justify and acquit the guilty, amen, for a bride. But take away the rights of the innocent, amen, and righteous from them. It's in a surprise that you're doing things like this. You're so mixed up, you're so unclear. Mm -hmm. By what means you wouldn't do it? By what means you wouldn't do it? Wrong state, wrong choice. Wrong, correct. If you're in a wrong state, you are destined to make what? Wrong choice. Mm -hmm. One of the things we forget, we love to overestimate my, um, ourselves. I remember reading this. Many years ago, there was a saint, and, uh, and, and, and he said, you never forget this. Environment is stronger than what? Willpower. Yeah, yes. We always believe, oh, the state, I'm stronger than the state. I get it. Though I'm in mm. darkness, I'll just see through it. Though I'm in fear, I will lower and I, you know, I can drive the car. We always believe we are greater than our environment. No, the environment will subdue you because it comes from every direction. And you typically are only coming from one direction. There's just too much variation. Only God said no environment can eclipse him. But you can change the environment if your spirit is strong. Yes. But then you know, that's just using your spirit to take over the environment. Mm -hmm. But you have to have an environment already conducive if you want to take over the outer environment or wherever. You have to already have an environment. Yeah. Amen? But if, 
Amen. You underestimate the environment and go, this environment though is darkness. I, you know, I ain't got no lights on my car, but I should be able to use my perfect sight. I have 20 to 20 to drive the dark road. You probably kill yourself and other people. Mm -hmm. You need light to aid you, to assist you when you're driving. When you're driving through a blizzard, you need the I beam. Your 20 to 20 won't cut it. The environment is stronger than your will. You have a great desire. You know. You, you, you have that gusto. I, I wanna, I, I, I'm tired. When I come in the car, do a couple of jumping jacks, and I should be able to drive. No, the environment, the state is going. You ain't gonna make it another couple miles. You need to pull over and get some rest. The environment is stronger. Your desire is good. Your will, it's even very encouraging. But it's simply what? Not enough. Not enough. I'll just sprinkle some water on my face. Drink a Coke. It's not enough. It's not enough. You must understand the environment, how it relates to your ability to execute what you're supposed to execute. And when? And in order to understand the right environment, or what I call favorable environment, according to what you have to do, which is to learn and apply. Mm -hmm. I need a favorable an environment that allows me to understand what I'm dealing with. Amen? And allows me to work with what I've become, learned to understand or see. Make sense? Because sometimes I can understand it, but when I look at it, I go, okay, I understand why I have to go, but it's slippery right now. I can't, can't make the drive. I gotta wait. So I understand it. I'm environment to learn, and one that allows me to also what? Work. We'll see what the Lord Jesus, the Lord Jesus said, you must work while there's still light. He, in fact, he, listen to what he said. Who can work in darkness or where there's no light? Either you can't. Either you will stumble and fall and hurt yourself. So I need an environment that allows me to comprehend and allows me to what? Apply. We're going to go just for a little bit more today. But sin, as you see in Isaiah chapter 5, verse 20, it messed man up. He confused the environment. He's so confused. He called darkness light and light darkness. And then he depends on his own limitation. To go, I'll do it in my own strength and my own lore. Do I, can't, I know I can't see, but I, I once did this in, you know, when I was in you know, Africa or when I was in Scarborough. So I think it should be similar. Different situation, different circumstance, different timing. You see? Or they're constantly trying, again, operating in a state. This is, this is, this is where verse, verse 22 is about their impair. Amen? I'm thinking that they can operate in that state, overestimating what? Themselves. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to Ephesians. When Jesus says, whoa, these are all shameless places, things that. Yeah where you will give up your own ability to learn and mm -hmm. apply. Mm -hmm. In other words, you yourself are sabotaging yourself. Yep. This word, as I said, that I want to share with you, how do we operate in light and life? How do I operate in a state, a condition that allows me to learn and to apply? Tell somebody I need to learn and apply. I need, I need to, to learn, learn and, apply. and apply. I need states. I need states, states that allows me, that allows me to, learn to, to learn and to apply myself. To learn and to apply myself. In Jesus' name. Amen. States and environments. Yeah. Are we back at Ephesians chapter 5? States are just internal environments. So it's really just internal and external. Oh, yes. Oh, oh. Chapter 10, chapter 5, Ephesians, verse 10, as you see, said, the Apostle Paul, Paul turned to the church of Ephesians and said, and try to learn in your experience what is pleasing, amen, to the Lord. So I have to be able to see what is pleasing and then I have to try to learn it. Mm -hmm. You understand? Then, my manifestation, let your life be constantly proof of what is most acceptable to Him. Every so often I see someone or a brother or sister and I watch how they manifest. And as soon as they speak or they move, I go, you still have not had enough light to learn. What is necessary? I'm going to go, you know, your first couple words or your first action based on our kingdom is in conflict with our kingdom or contrary to someone who was Lord. Or as soon as you speak, you go, like when Paul meet the, the, the brothers, he goes, you, haven't you have received the Holy Spirit? Because we haven't even learned about it yet. All we have is John baptism. Okay, your very first few expressions show me someone who has not learned certain things. And still don't know what is pleasing or what will give you peace or what will give you experience love or joy or health. Amen? 
Jesus said this in the Gospel. He said, if you would only know the things that is good are related to peace. Mm -hmm. Amen? You see, if you would only learn the things that facilitate peace. Amen? We say instead, amen, that you have become familiar with things of sin that create the Bible says, all the distress and burden and pressure you're experiencing in your life. Even on to say in verse 11, the Bible said, but how are you going to do this if you haven't learned? It said, take no part in and have no fellowship with the fruitless deeds and enterprise of darkness. It said, have no participation with that which is operating in ways you can't see. But instead, let your lives be so in contrast Amen? As to expose and reprove and convict them. It should make sure your life does not operate in a way of someone or representing someone who operates from not lore, not knowing, who don't understand how to be a man of God, a woman of God, a brother, a sister, a mother, a wife, a sister. Whatsoever you are called to do, you need to learn. This is why when they asked Christ how you enter the kingdom, he said, come as a child, come as one who can learn. You can always tell someone who act in darkness, etc. They are very poor at learning. Mm -hmm. They have not learned quite yet what light is and what it is to be made in the image of God. I'm good that. These people in life are typically constantly in challenge. Not that they got their bad people. Mm -hmm. Not necessary or urban. Just ignorant people. Mm -hmm. They do not know what environment allows them to learn and how to take advantage and how to operate as the scripture said, I want to live my life contrary to someone or something, amen, that is not Lord, not aware of what they should do and how to do it. Verse 12 went on to say, For it is a shame even to speak, amen, of or mention the things that such people practice in secret, in darkness. Amen. Verse 13 went on to say, but when anything, pay close attention to verse 13 now. But when anything is exposed, amen, and reproved by the light, light exposed thing, shows it for what it is, amen, it is made visible and clear. And where everything is visible and clear, there is what? Light. So light makes everything what? Visible and, visible and clear. clear. Yes. So when something is not operating according to the principle of how God created it to be, which is called misuse or abuse. Anything you're using, including your self, spirit, soul, or body, that is operating outside of, of what it was designed, that process is called misuse or abuse. The word abuse comes from the word misuse. You see? That thing is I, what missing there is I don't like or or, or or pure rebellion. Pure rebellion is this. I see it, I know it, I don't want to do it. Just rebellion. Abuse, a lot of times, what's happening? I'm using this thing out of the way it was designed or the time or the condition. I'm misusing it. Mm -hmm. right. Now sin tarnishes as you see your ability to tell what environment allows you to learn, to see it, to understand it. And what environment will, you know, allows you to apply what you're learning. So what you need typically, I need light. I need, in order for me to relate to God, or as verse 10 said, to learn what is pleasing to God, Amen. I need light to see who God is and what is it He wants and how I should live my life. So for me to live a life and say, you know, if you notice that verse here, say, try to learn, amen, to do what is pleasing to God. I cannot do what is pleasing to God until I know who God is and what makes God please. Amen. If I don't know, amen, what my wife or the first lady want, and I'm doing a lot of things, I'm busy, but none of the things I'm doing mean anything. You think she's pleased. And then I get so upset, can't you see how much I do done for you? She, I never asked you to do none of those. What I want you to do is move the water bottle. The one thing I need you to do, you don't do. And everything I don't want you to do, or I don't like you, you're, you're busy. Mm -hmm. You're busy. You have to learn. But you need something to make things visible of what to learn and how to learn it. Mm -hmm. I need light. I need an environment conducive of what I should learn. I need, I need to be identified. And how to learn it. And then I need abilities to do what I've learned. Then I can be pleasing to the one, amen, who I'm learning it for, or why I'm learning it and applying it for. The many of us are doing things that God is not happy with. You have failed to learn the things you should learn. 
If the scripture I quote you, the gospel, if you had only learned the things that facilitate or accord to peace. If you had only learned those things, then this day would not be upon you. You see, we need to operate in the place. Any man of God or woman of God that's worked their saw, the number one environment they like to be in is the environment that makes things very visible and clear. Amen. Mm -hmm. They're always very careful because they know they're going to be evaluated mm -hmm. to deal with anything they're not what? Clear on. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Ever so often, you go, Bishop, why is men and women of God when you ask them to do something, they're going to leave it with me? Mm -hmm. What does that mean? What do they need? I need time to become clear on the matter, the subject, the circumstance. Mm -hmm. I need to see God's will for that matter. I even need to know how to present it to Him properly. I need to make sure I'm operating according to what is pleasing to the Father. Mm -hmm. Unless I like the conflict of fighting with my Father. The many of us, we still think the devil is fighting us. The only thing you have to do is try to keep you in darkness. Your fight is with God. You're doing so much that He's not what? Pleased with. Mm -hmm. I mean, no, you're doing it for God. But it's the wrong thing. He got no one. That doesn't definitely not the way you're doing it. So he's correct, he said, he said, because of this, he said, because I love you, I will discipline you. You're failing at, at the Gospel of John, chapter 5, verse, verse 30. You're doing things I didn't call you to do. You're saying things I don't want you to speak on. And things I want you to speak on, you don't say nothing, you're silent. Mm -hmm. So you got to deal with you. I got to teach you not to consult your own will than others. But as I tell you to do something, you do it. As you hear it, you judge it. But I said, execute, execute. I was sleeping yesterday, I did before yesterday, I was sleeping, you know, I mean, typically God wakes me up at a different time, a little better lately, for some time, but there was a time in my life I used to just wake up at random times at the night, and, and, and sometimes I'm really tired, and I used to wake up and go, so I, I, I was disciplined enough, God had dealt with me enough, that I don't wake up, I was, okay Lord, what's going on, and then I'll check all the things I know to check, and if nothing, I can't sense anything going on, and then I want to go back to sleep, I said, Lord, why are you wake me up? I just want to sleep. I'm tired. Um, you know, and for a while it was just trading me, and sometimes I have to deal with things. But anyhow, sleeping, I was in a beautiful sleep. But I, I, don't know, I heard the, the, the Lord's voice audible, and it woke me up. I knew it was him, and I knew to get up. And I did both in, instantly. Like, it was, my wife was out, and it was clear. I needed, to, I needed to get up to start doing something. But I was like, get up now. And it wasn't one of those wake up where you gradually. No, you I, I, was, I was alert. I knew it was him, I knew it. I had to get up, I knew I need to get, like, get to my state now. What we have to learn, though, come to this place where we are hearing the Lord and, and seeing what is pleasing to Him and be responsive to Him. And this, He needs to develop this. But He needs an environment. This is what the church, and more important, this is what the presence of the Lord. It is that in, 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 in Psalms 36, verse 9, the Bible says, In your light I see light. God said, so You need to hang out in my light that you get familiar with what? Light. Amen. And understand what light do how it allows you to Lord. You're not allowed to call darkness light. You can't tell me you're in, a, you're in an environment or among a people or a thing where you're learning nothing and going, I'm in light. Mm -hmm. I love this one. We confuse this one. I mean, for she's just here. I like everything. It's not light. And I'm going to call my light what? Light. I can't learn nothing, but I like the people and the things and the situation. It's very likable. And we confuse light for what? Light. Mm -hmm. Now because you like something, you can learn from it. Yeah. Many people like wine and beer and alcohol. They go, I really like it, Pastor. I really like it, Bishop. But it def in fact, it's in contrast to what? Light. <laughs> it takes away light. You understand this? Mm -hmm. They want to feel so good. Your likes are not light, not necessary. And most of the time, they're not, actually. The kingdom of God is not light. It's not. This is why I said the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking. No. It's not your likes. It is light that allows you to what? See what is pleasing and acceptable to the Lord. When you are called to be a Christian, the Bible calls you a, a child of light. The Bible says you are translated, we will look at this, from the kingdom, the environment of darkness, into the kingdom of you know, uh, light of the glorious sun that God's love. Why are you there? Why? What are you doing in, in, in light kingdom? You're already saved. 
We have to understand why we're there. We're there now to learn what is what? Pleasing to God. And this is where I love God. He didn't just bring you there to the Lord knowing, you know, you're lazy and then he got down and empower you too. This is the Holy Spirit. This is where Christ said, now you must wait here to get power, empowering power from above. If that you can't do what God wants. You need to know us. Enabling power. Enabling power. I'm just about through already. The day just flies. I'm not going to get very far in the introductory of this process. But I do need to be a little patient and set the stage properly how to help you to go forward properly. I don't want the Lord to hold me accountable that I didn't lay the path properly for you to see it. You need an environment. So just give me a couple more minutes, just a few more minutes. I just want to finish just this one passage. Yeah, so it was good, yeah. Amen. So the Bible said that you see at 13 when anything, it's not a specific thing, it's everything, amen, is exposed and reproof, amen, light brings it into view by light, it is made visible and clear. And, and where everything is visible and clear, there's light. When things are very pronounced or very uh, amen, apparent and everybody can see it, light is there. We all can learn the same thing. We all can see the same thing learning the same thing. Light is there. Light is there. A amen? This is, this is the process of the church that, that's wrong. Sasadabalism. In a church... We all have to be in the environment, in the presence of God, where everybody can what? Lord, not just the man of God, not just the bishop. If that says there's something wrong in this interplay. Because everywhere is, is the, why does the bishop have to answer to help you to get into the light and encourage you to Lord? The bishop can't answer for you in the light. No. So if you have to answer for yourself in the light, you have to be able to be in the light to Lord. The bishop himself, this happens sometimes with men and women of God. We invite, God sends us out to bring his people into the light. But we don't like to stay in the light. David put it this way. David said, I, am, I have become more educated, more learned than all my teachers. Is it possible for the, for, the, for, the, for, the, for the congregation or our brothers and sisters to come into the light? And if the man or woman of God don't like staying into the light, they learn more than the man or woman of God? Course. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. They're just seeing more. As they're coming in and applying themselves, clinging, relying, and depending on Jesus, so the man or woman of God have to learn to stay in the light. This is called fellowship. We fellowship as children, as saints, as children of the light. People that are learning through what they're seeing. You must make sure this becomes across your experiences in verse 10. I need my experiences to be experiences of what I've learned. How to be with God, how to live before God, how to be a man or woman of God, how to believe right, how to think right, how to speak right, how to act, how to interplay with my brothers and sisters, how to interface with the world, how to use time. All that is pleasing and acceptable what? to God. Amen. All of this needs to become visible. The Bible says Jesus talks about enlightenment, enlightenment. All of this needs to operate or unfold in light. Enlightenment, everything unfolds in the light. Everything unfolds in the light. Mm -hmm. Everything. I need light, therefore, to shine upon what? Every area of my life. Everywhere I'm going to... I, I, in, in the way the Lord has taught me, I teach you how some of the way I operate. There's not too much I am fearful of. The first big fear I have, number one, I fear God. You think God was to take away the Holy Spirit that gives me light. And two, to take me into places where I can't what? See. I can't learn, I don't know how to adapt. Or to take me in a place I'm seeing and I have no power to do anything about it. It would be like if I'm in, I'm, I'm in a coma, I'm in a hospital bed, I can see everything here sometimes, people talk about this, but I can't do nothing about what I want. See? I call those, tra they're traumatized. Yeah. Amen? They're traumatized. Let me finish this process. Light makes everything visible. Everything clear. That was verse 13. Verse 14. Therefore he said, Awake, O sleepers, amen, and arise from your dead, the place where you're in this darkness. Dead people we put away in what? Darkness, a place where they can't see anything. We put them under the ground, we put them in a tomb. You're not supposed to live in places like a tomb where you can't see what? Anything. Christ said, Get up, come into the light, come to a place where you can warn. Amen. The Lord says, The Lord speaking now, amen. 
Therefore he said, Amen, Awake, O sleepers, and arise from the dead. Amen. And Christ shall shine midday. Amen. The noon day. Amen. Dawn upon you and give you what? Light. Christ said, I will shine away to wake up, become focused, understand the game. I will make light shine upon you, dawn upon you, that you can start to see the Lord, to understand what is pleasing to God. You go, are you going to answer whether you do what is pleasing or not? Therefore, might as well you get what? Familiar with it and learn to do it. Every area in your life, there's a way. God, Jesus said, I have a way how you should be. It's being and doing. Oh, to be with God, or to be with yourself, be with your family, be with things, be with situations. Ego, there is a way to be and to do. Ego, and you're going to need to learn. You know, if you get some time, you know, read verse 15. It said, it said, as a result of this, look carefully then how you live. Live with, you mean, intentional Amen. Purpose, be purposefully and worthily and accurately. It said, do not be, amen, as the unwise, amen, and witless people without any kind of sense. Amen. It said, you need to pay attention. But as wise, sensible, intelligent people, don't live like an animal. Live as one that understands what has to happen. I need to be in an environment that makes things visible and clear, that allow me to learn what is pleasing and acceptable to God. Why? God evaluates me. If I had no evaluator, what does it matter what I Lord or do? But the Bible said, everyone has to appear before God. Christian and non-Christian. What environment did you work from? Light or darkness? You already know. Hopefully you know. What did you learn? All these things you're doing, who are you trying to please? Who are you working for? Yourself? Family, environment, culture, peers. Who do you work for? Who do you work for? Something about man of God, Bishop, how come you don't drink? I'm like, oh, very simple. Very, very simple. I need to be in an environment that allows me to learn and allows me to do the things I am called to do. And I only have a certain amount of time, I don't, amen, to get this done. You're not trying to be a champion of beer? <laughs> don't want to be a, a, a hero of drinking and mixing alcohol. No, 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 no. I'm no, a, I'm a hero of impairment. <laughs> May God have mercy. I'm going to rest there today, as I said. We're going to explore this series over the next couple of weeks, if God allows. If something, you know, and I couldn't continue, minimum you need to learn this. I need an environment that allows me to learn what is pleasing to God. If, you, if you're Christianity, please understand, Christianity is not coming to church. It's not religion. And I dress this way and I worship that way. It's what have I learned into the light. Christianity is those that have been called out of darkness into light to learn what is pleasing to God and doing it. This is Christianity. Mm -hmm. They have many ways of doing that based on what they're learning. Mm -hmm. But the essence of this Christianity is quite simple. Come into an environment that allows you to learn what is pleasing to God and do it. Mm -hmm. And do it. Before I close in prayer, two seconds. understand what they should be doing anymore. In Jesus' name. Amen. I, I want to encourage you to the church. I just want to reiterate again. We are called, Jesus said, you are the light of the world, you are the salt. You add flavor, you, you change it. Salt has the ability to change environment. Something that has no taste that salt can make it salty. 
something in it that we are back here and think can grow soft, can preserve. You can change environment. But where people have no like, no ability to learn, to know God, to know themselves, to see how they believe, how they think, how they speak, how they act, how they interfere, how they live their life, their marriage, how they use their resource, they should have enough light to what? To start to see. This is salt, this is light. It makes everything visible. Now there's some area. Everything. Everything. Everything that you're going to be calling to account, you need to get some insight, some knowledge, and some power to do it. Some power to do it. The Bible summarizes all this. It's called the anointing. The strength, power, and ability necessary to learn, to operate in life. I wanted the big thing. I prayed to the Lord. Lord, help me to discern not to call darkness light and call light what? Darkness. Things that are not making things visible, it is not light. Light is not necessary light. Please be very clear with this. Amen? Light is that which makes everything visible. We, the church, we must learn to operate perpetually in an environment which is the presence of God that allows us to learn. There are many things to learn in your life during the journey. About God, about yourself, your family, people, things, environment, time, destiny, gifts. There's so much. One thing I know, the place to do it all is in the presence of God. It's in light. Second thing I know, you'll need the courage, the grace to do something about it. This is why he wants you to know it, not just to know it. You don't get to, Christ tell the parable, you don't get to know it and bury it under the ground and say, Lord, I know, you know, that if I know this, you know, and I was to do the opposite, even though I'm not doing the one I'm supposed to know, you won't be happy. He'll beat you for not doing it. <laughs> you need to do it. Unless he told you not to do it. And for the unchurched. I understand you. I came from darkness. I was born into it. I was once those was a hero of drinking. Yes, I was. Yes, I was. This is the truth. Amen. I once was those was proud of what alcoholic and mixed together to make a little vodka. Well, I wasn't going to talk liquor, but mixing different drinks. But the Lord translate me. He got all these state you're evoking on yourself. None of them is conducive of learning what is pleasing. And I will evaluate in why I'm so unpleased with you. God was merciful to deliver me. And I know today he wants to deliver you if you're not in the light. He wants you to come to the state, the place where you can mourn about him. Mourn about your precious life and the beautiful gifts and your family and your future and your destiny and time and service and glory. Jesus came to bring many sons. You don't want you to live a life you're not proud of. You want you to live a life that when your name is called, you'll stand tall. It's not hiding like a, there's nothing glorious about how I live. You'll stand tall. He's calling you today. He said, let me translate you from darkness to state that is not conducive of warning to the kingdom of my son. He said, who I so love, the glorious son of light, when you were alone, what is pleasing, and have the power to do something about it. What a glorious life. I'm excited to see what some of you are going to do in the light. May God grant me grace to lay hold of, see some of it, or the tales of your journey through this realms, what you have done in the light. I'm excited about that. Let me pray for you today. Father, we thank you today for what you're doing in this realms, how you are calling for your creation, to transform them from darkness to light, an environment conducive of learning what is pleasing to you, living an effective life. You create man to live an effective life. Jesus was not ashamed to say, he is brothers with the human creation and he's gonna bring all of them into effectiveness, glory, hallelujah. I can't stop marveling and thanking you for how kind you are, how loving, how forgiving, how merciful, how good you are. It just makes me want to shout highest praise. Hallelujah. Remember your creation. Draw them. Draw them to you. Move them out of darkness. Move them away from calling darkness light. And call them light darkness. Move them away from impairment. Move them away from self-sufficiency. Move them away from Father. Amen. All that will block them from becoming what you call them and made them to be, to be counted among the sons of glory. 
equally act to remind us, the church, to lay hold of us, and let us lay hold of you. We're to perpetually operate in life. Constantly, every moment, Lord, in what is pleasing in your sight, Father. And operate according to that. But Jesus came and translate us to be sons of glory. Help us to be the sons of glory of this generation. So along with the witnesses, the cloud of witnesses, we will be able to stand and go, in our generation, we operate according to the principles of light and maximize all the Lord in according to the will of God glorifying him in the opportunities, the circumstance, and all the condition. We commit ourselves afresh into your hands in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we say, Amen. Amen.